The only thing, which I didn't see coming actually, the only thing is... Hey guys, it's Joel and welcome back to the channel. And today it's time that I disclose with you the truth about my 2007 Maserati Quattroporte. Because believe it or not, it's been about three months now since I bought this car very cheaply. I paid a shade under £6,000 for this gorgeous four-door Italian supercar. But as we all know, if you buy cheap, you buy twice and running these things can be ruinously expensive. In the almost three months that I've had this car, I've been using it a lot. And as such, I've covered two and a half thousand miles in this Maserati since I picked it up. About a thousand of those miles were within a two day period when I took this car to Germany to experience the Autobahn and the Nürburgring. But otherwise I have been using it for running the odd errand and going to the shops every now and then because it has been an enjoyable thing to daily drive. But at what expense? And that's what you're all here to see and that's what we're gonna discuss right now. So what is this shocking truth then about my Maserati Quattroporte? Well, it's the fact that it has cost me absolutely nothing to run. It has probably been one of the most reliable cars I have ever owned. And I'm not joking, over those two and a half thousand miles, I've literally not had to spend a single penny on anything essential. Yes, I've done some modifications. I've had some gorgeous new rubber fitted to it thanks to Michelin. I've had the Quicksilver exhaust, the incredible ceramic coating from iValet UK and G-Technic, but there's not been any essential maintenance needed. Nothing has broken and the car's never broken down on me. Now, if you have been here since the start, you may be shouting at the screen now telling me, well, what about the engine? Because yes, when I first bought this car, it was immediately apparent that it is suffering from the well-documented cam variator issue. It causes a very unpleasant rattle on startup, especially when the car is cold. And to fix, I was quoted a figure very close actually to what I paid for this car. It started with a four. However, speaking to the specialists at Exotic and Supercar, they certainly advised me to get it sorted, but they did admit also that they'd never actually seen one of these engines fail because of this issue, just that the rattle does tend to get worse over time. Now, to be honest, that really upset me when I got that quote because I've always wanted to own one of these cars and I had all of these things planned for it, such as that Germany trip. But my intention with this thing was always to just drive it and enjoy it. And having to fork out almost what I paid for the car again was not really going to be a viable option because it's quite a high mileage car. It's actually a category S car. And if I was spending 10, 11, 12,000 pounds on a Quattroporte initially, I would have ended up with a much more desirable and nicer example to start with. However, this car was sold to me with a warranty, which has proven to be worth its weight in paper. In fact, after a month of submitting that warranty claim, we're yet to hear anything back. However, despite all of that, for the money that I paid on face value, I have gotten to enjoy an Italian four-door Ferrari-derived 4.2-litre V8 Monster as my basically daily runabout for the last three months. And it's just been absolutely wonderful. It's one of those bucket list things, owning a Maserati. Hell, one day I'd love to own a Ferrari and a Lamborghini too. But to be able to own a Maserati that looks and sounds as good as this for more than half the price of a new Dacia Sandero, it's just completely worth it in my opinion. Now, if you've watched my Germany series, you'll also know that this car has turned out to be well, much more efficient than I expected. In my generic driving every day, I average around 20 mpg, and that figure used to be a little bit higher before I got the Quicksilver exhaust system fitted. In fact, since I got that exhaust system fitted, I've been using the engine, the revs, and the paddles a hell of a lot more. But as we know now, on a run, this thing is easily capable of 30 miles per gallon, which boggles the mind. Insurance wise, well, currently I'm on a trade policy, so actually it didn't cost me anything out of pocket to add this to that trade policy. But I did do an independent quote the other day and found that it would be for me, a 27 year old living in Surrey, about 700 pounds a year to comprehensively insure. The annual tax is also around 700 pounds. However, when you compare it to other countries like Ireland or even places in the Far East like Singapore that have taxes almost twice the price of the car, I'm not complaining. There are a few things, of course, that are not perfect with this Maserati. However, I wasn't expecting it to be so. I paid less than 6,000 pounds for this car. And you have to remember it's a 112,000 mile, 17 year old 
Italian luxury item. The interior is played with the sticky buttons, however, I've managed to improve them ever so slightly. I have a brake bulb warning light that comes up every time I start the car, despite the brake lights seeming absolutely fine. And my parking sensors sort of wake up each morning and decide whether they want to go to work. But truly, once you sit inside this thing, you see this wheel, you see that bad, you glance over at the gorgeous stitching caramel leather and the carbon fiber that is in beautiful condition. Anything that doesn't work, it doesn't, it just doesn't matter. Um, this honestly has been the best car that I have ever owned. It really, truly has. But the only reason I'm truly making this video is because I know there will be lots of you watching this video that like me, dream of owning somewhat ridiculous or potentially ruinous cars. Maybe it's something like a big old L322 Range Rover or a Porsche Boxster or 911 that supposedly are plagued with the IMS bearing issues, or maybe a Maserati like mine. And I want this to be an encouragement to you to just go out and do it. Life is too short. And I've shown with this, I've shown with my 7 Series in the past, with my Porsche Boxster S that I bought very cheaply, that you can get in and out of these cars, enjoy them, and it costs you pretty much nothing. Now, of course, it's not to say that something you buy might be a different story. I could have just been very, very lucky indeed so far. And it's also not to say that this Maserati isn't gonna go severely wrong today, tomorrow, next week, or maybe next month. But right now, I am so happy that I bought this car. That's a memory and an experience that's gonna be imprinted in my head forevermore. So as it's a lovely day and we're rapidly descending into the winter months, let's get the car on and let's go for a really fun drive because that is what this thing is all about. most about this car is that it makes you feel special like I say every time you step inside it but then even more so when you switch it on and start driving it I didn't really expect it but the steering at lower speeds is really really light and this thing is super super easy to drive you're aware of the size of it it does feel quite wide it is quite long but you get used to that fairly quickly like with anything and it's something that I'd happily let my great great grandma take to the shops to be honest because for all intents and purposes you could be in anything with light steering and one of these great ZF gearboxes. However, you guys know me, that's not how I drive. I put it straight into manual, straight into sport. Sport just gives us a little bit more on the steering, a little bit more feel, but mainly stiffens up that suspension a bit. Makes it just a bit sharper for tighter corners, which is what we're just coming into now. And as you can see, sort of around 3000 RPM, the exhaust wakes up and the whole car vibrates with sound. I can feel it in my seat, I can really feel it under my foot, and you do really feel like you're driving a machine, which is something that, dare I say, is lost from newer Maseratis which I've driven, um, but anything modern really, you don't get that sense of your foot being connected to an engine, a manifold, an exhaust system. There's just not really any senses going on at all. So if I floor it out to 60, I'll shift in second, and it's such a quick, such a quick upshift, way quicker than you'd expect from something that's almost 20 years old. Likewise with the downshifts into second, almost instantaneous with some very satisfying backfires behind us. Quicksilver exhaust has obviously added a lot of that drama. Before it did lack a little bit. It wasn't as punchy in the noise department as I had hoped for or wanted. The Quicksilver exhaust has probably actually tipped the scales further the other way. Now it's a bit too raucous, because even just cruising around at 30, you get a bit of drone. 60, 70 miles an hour, it's a bit worse. And so it's, it's lost its sort of under the radar charm. It is very noisy now, but to be honest, for what I'm driving it for, it's great. In terms of the driving experience, there's not really anything I can fault it on. In fact, there is one thing with the gearbox. So even in manual mode, now I'm in third gear, I wanna floor it in third gear, but if I put my foot all the way down, it will automatically downshift to second for me. And I don't want it to, I wanna hold it in third and put my foot down. 
there's no way it, it can't do that sort of kick down thing. Likewise, at the top of the rev range, it will shift automatically for you, even in manual, which is a little bit of a shame. Not the end of the world, but it's a bit annoying. But there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing really I can fault it on. I mean, even if this wasn't mine and it was a 30 or 40,000 pound viewer's car that I was driving, I wouldn't be being very critical because there's just, I, I just love it. The infotainment system is old, but it's an old car. And actually I like the way it works. You can use this side to adjust what's on the screen and this side for your volume and your radio and all that sort of stuff. And the sound system, this Bose system in here is so, so good. I feel like sound systems actually peaked back in the mid noughties. The only thing which I didn't see coming actually, the, the only thing, and it's sort of a blessing and a curse, is the attention this car gets. Now it has definitely got worse since I had the Quicksilver exhaust, but some of the encounters I've had uh, with the car not even switched on, so it wouldn't have any bearing on, on the situations. Uh, it's 50-50, there's some people who well, know what the car is and know that it's a cheap Maserati and give you a nod for it and say, good on you, you brave soul, that's cool, well done. And they're happy to see you out and about and using it. And there's other people that just see the badge, see it's a Maserati and make wild assumptions about you. I won't go into details, but there was one particularly disturbing encounter I had at a petrol station a few weeks ago with my wife and I'm not making this up. I parked slightly over from the pump. I was a little bit in the middle. I was in a rush and genuinely in that moment, I couldn't remember which side the pump was on. And this Maserati tells you the wrong side because it's Italian. Anyway, I was slightly off center of the pump. Someone could still squeeze in on the right, but I was a little bit in the middle. Not something I would ever do on purpose. And a lady, as I was coming out the petrol station, very passive aggressively said, nice of you to park in the middle like that. You're extremely selfish. And I said, you know, I'm very sorry. It was just an accident, I didn't mean to. And she said, no, you did it deliberately because you're driving a Maserati. To which I was just gobsmacked. I said, absolutely not. It's got nothing to do with the car. I pointed to her VW Tiguan she had and said, your car's worth more than mine, sweetheart. But she was having none of it. She said, I'm a Maserati driver. I think I'm better than everyone else. These were her words. And uh, I'm an inconsiderate little so-and-so. And that was a real shock and uh, not a very pleasant experience. And there's been those sorts of people that, that want to interact with you for the wrong reasons, literally because of the badge. And that's not very nice. I've heard it anecdotally from proper supercar owners with things like Ferraris and Lamborghinis and you sort of expect it, but not with a 6,000 pound Quattroporte. Um, it's a really unpleasant thing to have to go through. And it's now always in the back of my mind that you know, what are these people gonna say to me? So that's not very nice, but really and truly, that is the only thing, I mean, it's the only thing I can fault this car on. It's sublime. I should have done it earlier in the video, but about 70% of you that watch this content are not subscribed. And it would massively help me, of course, if you did subscribe, we're very close to 100,000 subscribers. But it means ultimately that we can reach more people on this channel and encourage more people to make financially fantastic, stupid decisions. But more so, it allows me to make more of these stupid financial decisions and you can live vicariously through me. However, this one really hasn't been all that stupid with hindsight. Lastly, please comment below your dream car that sort of fits into this, I don't know, it might be cheap, it might be a bit more expensive, but it's in that sort of category of, I really shouldn't do that. Which car is that for you? Please comment below, I would love to hear it, and maybe it'll even be the next car that I have on this channel. And I'm just gonna quickly mention my Porsche Cayenne, which has also proved to be an extremely reliable car and has ended up being my daily driver, despite the fact I bought that as a content car. I've ended up keeping that for over a year now. And so if you'd like to see some content with the KN, which I still own, um, also take the chance now to comment below and let me know. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I've thoroughly enjoyed making it. I just had to come out and just sing this car's praises really, because it's been nothing but fantastic. And I'll look forward to seeing you all in the next video, hopefully very, very soon.